Hi everyone, this is Karen from the Historical Society of Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. In this video, we're going to head down to the Plymouth Meeting Township area. Now, those of you who may live in Plymouth Meeting or neighboring townships, you may be familiar with this location on Germantown Pike near the intersection of Chemical Road. Here at this intersection, you can see some old stone structures. And to someone who may not be familiar with the area's histories, you may not know what they used to be. These are the remnants of some old lime kilns dating back to the mid to late 1800s in Plymouth Meeting. The earliest known lime kilns in Montgomery County date back to the 1600s. In roughly 1686, a man by the name of Thomas Fitzwater, who lived in Orland, Montgomery County, discovered a lot of lime deposits in the area. He then decided, you know, lime can be used for a lot of things if processed correctly. So he built one of the first, if not the first, kilns in Montgomery County. And by 1693, it got the attention of the Penn family in Philadelphia. This caused them to decide to build a road connecting uh, the lime kilns in Orland to Philadelphia so it could be used in the city and also transported via the Delaware River to other areas in the colonies. That road actually still exists to this day and today it is known as Lime Kiln Pike in Montgomery County. Orland was not the only place in Montgomery County to have lime deposits. A good amount of lime deposits were discovered in the Plymouth Meeting and White Marsh areas, hence why you see the two lime kilns that survived to this day in 2024. So you may be wondering, why is lime so important to the early colonists? Well, they knew that if you heated the limestone, it would disintegrate into a powder-like substance known as lime or quicklime. When mixed with water and other substances, this could be used for a wide range of products. For example, farmers could use it for fertilizer. Uh, they could also use it as lime wash. And masons could also use it as mortars. So these stone structures known as kilns were constructed out of harder stone, not lime, and they would feature a tall chamber with an air shaft and a side opening. So as limestone would be put into these kilns, they were layered inside these chambers with wood and coal, and as the quick lime was formed, it could be extracted from the side opening, which they could then use in their various products. By the mid to late 1800s, there were several kilns in the Plymouth Meeting and White Marsh area, much more than the two that still survive to this day. For these individual kilns, uh, we do know, according to the 1870 atlas, uh, it was identified as being operated by Haggy and Bro. Lewis and George Haggy were the sons of Samuel Haggy, who lived in Cold Point. The sons actually lived in Plymouth Meeting, so they could be close to the kilns located on today's Germantown Pike. And the land was leased from Dr. E.C. Leadham. Based on research done by Edward Addison, uh, the grandfather of Dr. Leadham, uh, whose name was Richard Leadham, purchased a tract of 112 acres at the north corner of the intersection of what is now Germantown and Butler Pike around 1789 was when he made this purchase. 
over time, parts of this property ended up being rented out until 1803 when Richard's son, Dr. Joseph Leadham, moved on to a portion of the farm in order to start his medical practice. The remainder of Richard's estate was leased and rented to farmers and lime burners for many, many years. Uh, Dr. Joseph Leadham continued this business when he acquired the entire estate after Richard died in 1827. So we do know for certain that in 1870, according to the Atlas, we do know these two kilns were most likely uh, operated by Haggy and Bro, but uh, we don't know exactly how long uh, it was operated by them. It does seem like, based on Edward Addison's research, that the land was owned by members of the Leadham family, and it was likely continuously rented out to people who wanted to operate their own uh, lime kiln. The old lime kilns obviously are no longer used. However, for people who live in Plymouth Meeting, you may know that there is still to this day an active lime quarry in Plymouth Meeting. One of the most prominent lime industries in Plymouth Meeting was owned by the Corson family. Due to its uh, vast size and its uh, long-running history, the business still technically runs to this day, but it's currently known as Highway Materials and it's located at the intersection of Joshua Road and Stenton Avenue. Now, if you aren't familiar with the area and you're just driving by, you would have no idea that this quarry was there because the company had the land uh, landscaped in a way that you really can't see the quarry from the road to make it more visually appealing to residents and pa people passing through. Allegedly, the existing quarry space is said to be one of the oldest continually functioning limestone quarries in the United States. As we've mentioned before, this quarry is the only one uh, that is still a continuous limestone quarry in Plymouth Meeting. And that's because in the 19th century, a lot of the smaller local kilns, like the ones you see on Germantown Pike, ended up being bought out by these larger industrial companies. If you would like to see the older kilns, they are still around to this day in 2024. And all you have to do is drive down Germantown Pike and you can either park at the gas station across the street or find another place nearby to park your car and walk over and see it. They are pretty cool. If you like these videos, please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can be notified when a new video is released. The Historical Society of Montgomery County, Pennsylvania is a private nonprofit library and museum located in Norristown, Pennsylvania. We rely on the support of our members, volunteers, community, and viewers like you. Your support allows us to continue making these videos to make history fun and accessible to the public. If you would like to donate to help us continue making these videos, you may do so by clicking the link in the description section below. This will take you to our main website where you can make a donation. Thank you so much for your support, and we look forward to seeing you in a future video.